This is a key to worksheet 14.5 part A and in 14.5 this is a section where you're solving rational equations and so remember a rational equation is an equation that um, has a rational term, a rational expression. So notice in this case um, just think of a rational expression as, as a fraction. So see you have, you have something that looks like a fraction in, in, in this equation. Um, now, keep in mind that, that a rational equation doesn't always have to have the variable in the numerator. It could be in the denominator as well. In this case, it's not. It's just in the numerator, but you could see it in the denominator like with number 2. Okay. Now, the directions also says uh, state the restrictions of any. So, there are no restrictions in number 1 because the denominator is never going to be 0. So if you look at, at this denominator, that's a 4, that's 3, and that's 4. So it's never 0. So that's why in number 2, you see the word, what's the restriction, what can't x be, whereas in number 1, you don't. That's because there are no restrictions in number 1. So there are no restrictions. Okay? So, so because the denominator is never 0. Because the denominator is never 0. All right, so that's why. Okay, now, so, so when solving a rational equation, the first thing you want to do is, is make sure that you find the LCD. Now, in number one, it's pretty easy to find the LCD. So remember, your least common denominator sets so the, that's the smallest common denominator that these three uh, numbers go into. So four, three, and four, the LCD is 12. All right, so always use the least. It makes things a lot easier for you. Someone else could use 24, but that's not the least. So if you don't use the least, you will uh, at some point, depending on the problem, make things pretty difficult on yourself. Okay, so once you find the least common denominator, the next thing is to multiply both sides by that least common denominator. So remember, the whole point of, of multiplying both sides by the least common denominator is to get these these denominators to be a 1 and you're going to see that that's going to happen. Now when if you notice that on the left side there are two fractions x minus 3 divided by 4 and then you have this rational expression 2x plus 1 divided by 3. You need to put that in parentheses so x minus 3 divided by 4 plus 2x plus 1 divided by 3 and there's a reason for that. And then over here since there's just one fraction, one rational expression, I'm not going to put that in parentheses. But if you have two or more, put in parentheses. The reason is this. So, so once, once you find the LCD, now you have to multiply both sides by that LCD, just like that. And then remember, the parentheses was needed was because now you're going to distribute. So every, for every rational expression, every rational expression is going to be multiplied by 12. And so here's what happens. You get 12 times x minus 3 divided by 4 plus 12 times 2x plus 1 divided by 3 equal 3 fourths times 12. Okay? All right, so, so um, now you're going to reduce. Remember, the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to get this to be a 1, and you can now because, look, 4 to 4 is 1, 4 to 12 is, is 3. 3 to 3 is 1, 3 to 12 is 4. 4 to 4 is 1, 4 to 12 is 3. Okay? Now, here's something you've got to remember now. If you're not careful, you're going to say, you see you have 3 times x minus 3, right? If you're not careful, you're going to say that's 3x minus 3, and that's not. That is not 3x minus 3. So what you need to do now is this. You should put the numerator in parentheses since that's more than one term. So you have two terms here in that, in that numerator. Same thing here. Put that in parentheses. I don't need to put this in parentheses because it's just one factor, one, one term. Okay? So what that means is this. This right here really becomes 3 times x minus 3. This right here really becomes plus 4 times 2x plus 1. And this becomes 3 times 3, which is 9. And now distributing again, you get, and now notice you do have a linear equation here. In fact, this was a linear equation. Even though it's, it, we say it was rational, it's also linear um, because the, the uh, 
numerators, if you look at all the numerators, they all have exponents of ones for the variables, and there are no variables in the denominator. Those are all numbers. So that's a linear, by the way, which, which we can still consider rational. All right, um, now distribute the 4 as well. So I get 3x minus 9 plus 8x plus 4 equal 9. Combine like terms, 8x and 3x is 11x. Negative 9 and a positive 4 is a negative 5 equal 9. Adding 5 to both sides, I get 11x equal 14. So x is 14 divided by 11, okay? And so if I did this work correct, then I should get 14 divided by 11. All right, and, and you can check this if you want to check. You have your calculator. So to check this, you always go back to the original. Always go back to the original. So x minus 3 divided by 4 plus 2x plus 1 divided by 3 equal 3 fourths. So where we see the variable x, you're going to substitute 14 elevens. Leave it as a fraction. Don't put it as a decimal because you, if you notice this decimal, 14 elevens, let's see, 14 divided by 11, if you notice, it doesn't terminate. All right, so it's it's a repeating decimal. So so don't approximate either. So what I would do is is I would just just use a calculator. I would, I'd first of all write out that x is 14 eleven. So 14 elevens minus 3 divided by 4 plus 2 times 14 elevens plus 1 divided by 3. And I want to see, and I want to see if that's going to equal to 3 fourths. All right, so let's look at this right here. So the way I would do this is this. I would say, I, I, would, I would just go ahead and, and type in what I see. So 14 elevens, 14 divided by 11, minus 3. Okay, press equal. Because if you, if you say divide by 4 now, the only thing you're dividing by 4 is that 3. So that's important. It's very important. You remember a while ago we put we put this numerator in parentheses? You may want to do the same thing here if you if you think you're going to forget. So put that in parentheses because that's two terms. Put that in parentheses because that's two terms. See if you if you were to divide by four, oops, sorry, let me just do that again. 14 divided by 11 minus 3. And then if you say divide by 4, that's not what this is. This is not that because what you did was you only divided 3 by 4. This has to be divided by 4 as well. So, so either you put in parentheses, either you say this, 14 divided by 11 minus 3, close the parentheses, and then say divide by 4. And then, and, and now this is this. And now I would have just gone on, but that this is what this is. If you didn't want to put parentheses, what you should have done was this. Okay, so listen carefully. What you should have done was say this. 14 divided by 11 minus 3, then press equal. And now divide by 4, and you get the same thing we had earlier. Okay? All right. So so if you need to put parentheses, so let's just go ahead and leave it in parentheses. So I'm going to say 14 divided, oops, and put the parentheses. So parentheses, 14 divided by 11. Close the parentheses, oops, sorry, minus 3. Minus 3, close the parentheses, then divide by 4, plus parentheses 2 times 14 divided by 11 plus 1 close the parentheses to, oops divide by 3 and press equal and you get 0.75 so that is 0.75 which is what 3 fourths is okay so so 14 11 is correct so I did I did not make an error going through here okay now number two so number two I do have to deal with the restriction because remember you cannot divide by zero. So you got to ask yourself, what makes my denominator zero? What what value of x would make my denominator zero? So think, two times x equals zero when? When x is what? When x is zero. Because if you get x by itself, don't you get zero? So that's one of your restrictions. Now you go through each each fraction though. Each you got to look at each each denominator. So two times zero is zero. Well, that's just x, right? So x is, has to be what zero. And then that's never zero, that's always three. So how many restrictions do you have? You only have one. All right, now let's find the LCD. So, so if you look at this, you're trying to you're asking yourself, what is the smallest term, the smallest expression that 2x, x, and 3 go into? All right. So the way I would think about this is this. All right, so 
I see a 2x, so I know that, remember the whole the whole point of multiplying by the LC is to get this to be a 1, right? So that means that, that if that needs to be a 1, then a 2x needs to be in the LCD, because 2x and 2x would divide out. So that, so, so I need a 2x, all right? Then, then my next one's x. So if I want to divide that out, then I better have x in the LCD. We we'll already do, right? It's right here. So I could keep on going, all right? Then, then I have a 3. In order for me to divide that out, I've got to multiply by an LCD that, that has a factor of 3 in it. So, so this is not divisible by 3, so i got to multiply by 3. So that's your LCD. So your LCD is 6x. And then now let's think. Will 2x go to 6x? Yes. Will x go to 6x? Yes. Will 3 go to 6x? Yes. All right, so that's your LCD. Okay, now the next thing, just like we did in number 1, remember in number 1, since I had two rational expressions, I put that in parentheses. Same thing here. Two rational expressions, put that in parentheses. So you have 3x minus 2 divided by 2x minus 5 over x equal 1 third. So I put the, put the left side in parentheses because there are two rational expressions. Now remember the next step is to multiply both sides by the LCD. That's going to help you to get rid of these denominators and make those factors of 1s. Okay, now you got to distribute first. Don't reduce first. You saw that in one of the lessons. What happens if you reduce first, you're going to be distributing the wrong factor. Okay, the wrong expression. So you need to distribute first. So I get 6x times 3x minus 2 divided by 2x minus 6x times 5 divided by x equals 1 third times 6x. All right? Okay, now remember the whole point of multiplying by the LCD, and you got to make sure this is correct. The whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to get these to be a factor of 1, and watch it, you can now. 2 to 2 is 1, 2 to 6 is 3. X and X is 1, X and X is 1. See that? So now I get 3 times 1, so that's 3, right? Now remember, put that in parentheses, just like the previous lesson. We talked about that, put that in parentheses, put that in parentheses, because that's, that's more than one term. You have two terms here, two terms here. Because what happens is that this 3 is going to be multiplied by 3x minus 2. All of 3x minus 2. And then over here, the only thing that divides out are the x's, right? So you get 6 times 5, so that's minus 30. Equal. And over here, the only thing that divides out is this 3. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 6 is 2. And then 1 times 2x is 2x. All right? And then distributing. I get 6, I'm sorry, I get 9x minus 6 minus 30 equal 2x. So notice I went from this rational equation, this rational equation that's not linear. The reason it's not linear is because you have variables in the denominator. So you might say, well, the, the exponents in the numerator are all 1. That's true, but you have variables in the denominator. So that's, that's just considered a rational expression. It's not linear. See, this, this could have been considered linear because because these denominators are just constants and, and you have x to the first, 2x to the first. But the fact that, that you have variables that are denominated does not make this linear. But notice I do have a rational equation, but I end up with a linear equation, right? Okay. So let's solve this linear equation. To solve a linear equation, you combine like terms, bring all variables to one side, all constants to the other. So you get 9x minus 36, the negative 6 and negative 3 is the negative 36, equal 2x. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 9x from both sides. And so combine like terms, that's 0. I get a negative 36 equals, and then 2x and a negative 9x is a negative 7x, right? And so divide both sides by negative 7. And divide out, reduce, I get x to be, no, you got to know that a negative divided by negative is, is, is a positive. So I'll leave it like this. You get 36 over 7, all right? Okay, now, so if I did all the algebra correct, I get 30, I get 36 over 7, right? But you got to, you, since I did have a restriction, you have to check. You do have to check to make sure that this number, this, this solution is not a restriction. Because it, it in, in, in another lesson, you're going to see, or in another worksheet, you're going to see that, that this proposed solution, this, this number right here, is a solution to this equation. But it may not be a solution to the original, because the original was a rational equation, and this is a linear equation. So, 
So the point being that whenever you get to this point, you need to make sure, first of all, it's not listed. All right. So since since this is not the restriction and I did all this work correct, then that's my solution. 36 over 7. All right. Now, if you want to check this, if you want to check this, now the way I would check this is this way because it, it is going to become pretty complicated. So we're going to approximate somewhat. So here's, here's my equation. You get 3x minus 2 divided by 2x minus 5 over x equal, I want to see if that's going to equal 1 third, right? Okay. So where we see the variable x, I'm going to substitute this. So I get 3 times 36 over 7 minus 2 divided by 2 times 36 over 7, right? Okay. Minus 5 divided by 36 over 7. And I want to see if that's going to equal one third. Now, just like before, let's go ahead and put this in parentheses. Let's put that in parentheses. And we're going to probably have to be careful with, with this denominator right here, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to put that in parentheses. Let's see what we get. So I get 3 in parentheses, 3 times 30, 36 divided by 7. Close the parentheses. Oops, sorry, I forgot to subtract 2. All right, subtract 2, then close the parentheses, and then that's going to be divided by... Now, you see that since that's a, a product right here, let's just go ahead to be on the safe side and put that in parentheses, and then let's just go ahead and put this in parentheses. All right, so, so let's just be on the safe side. Um, so I'm going to get divide by, and if you want to, you can put that in parentheses as well. Since we put everything in parentheses, put everything in parentheses. All right, just be on the safe side. Divided by, and then uh, parentheses, 2 times 36 divided by 7. Close the parentheses. All right. Subtract parentheses, 5. Close the parentheses. Divide by parentheses, 36 divided by 7. Close the parentheses. And when I press equal, hopefully I'll get 1 third. Yep, 0.3333 remembers 1 third. So that's, that's 1 third, and that's what this is. Okay, so so what I would do, is, guys, is, is is if you're going to check this, just just when you substitute, go ahead and put numerator parentheses, denominator parentheses, new even though that's just one term right here, numerator parentheses, denominator parentheses, all right, because because there's a lot of things being involved here. So so if you left some parentheses off, you probably in your calc since you're using your calculator, if you left something off, your calculator would would tell you what you're putting in, which is not what really is occurring. All right, so that is the key to section 14.5, part A.